Hey, due to the channel, the picked up a snowmobile. Might give this a try. It does have uh, some problems, but hey, who doesn't like a good project? So like pretty much any jet ski or anything else, I like to kind of go through it. Never know what you get until you actually lay your hands and eyes on it. So I picked up this 2014 Renegade two days ago. It's a 137 inch track, a 600cc, two stroke. It's pretty sweet actually. It's like really nice condition. It had about 4,000 miles and it has a low compression on one cylinder. So in all good fashion, we'll take the motor out and we'll see how it goes. I plan on uh, kind of ripping it apart, changing some things. There's some issue with the ski here. I'll probably replace the skis. It needs new carbides, so I'll probably just replace the skis and carbides. I got this really cool lift, uh, trick lift. It allows you to lift the snowmobile up. But a guy about an hour away from me makes them, and he said he had red, white, and blue in stock, and I said, I'm game. Let's go. So I picked that up. It's really pretty sick on the lift. Should make uh, getting this apart pretty easy. But I'll wash it and then I'm just going to start tearing it apart. But first I have to get this ski done so I can bring it to Daytona next week and get that going. But this should be a fun ski or sled. It's got uh, studs, a 16 inch wide track, 137 inch R motion suspension. Really happy about it's got different uh, front suspension also. It's the adrenaline model, so pretty neat. But uh, last time I had a sled was 25 years ago. I had a 95 VMAX 500, and this is way better than that. So it's got electric start, heated grips, not a heated seat. Should be fine, but uh, pretty sweet. I really like the painted tunnel. Everything is pretty nice about it. It wasn't totally crazy about the orange, but it's definitely growing on me. It's dirty right now, but let's wash it up and tear it apart. See if we can get the cylinder sent out before I leave the state. about the sled I uh, thought about filming how to disassemble it but honestly I didn't really have a clue so I didn't really see that many good guides however I just recommend uh, just take apart everything take apart all the plastics make sure you get these uh, harnesses unplugged anyway just take apart as much stuff as you can and get it out of the way don't feel bad about taking something apart because I just have to be done anyway. Let's just talk about some of the problems with this. So when I bought this at zero compression on one cylinder, I haven't got the engine out yet, but what I did find is uh, these intake manifolds here. I don't know. Yeah, this is the right, it's probably not the right one for that one. But basically they were all kind of cracked around the edges and I could just, I pulled them out almost by accident on the first one. And the second one I just kind of pulled out, but it was, it was all broke. So Brian told me to get some boysene manifolds. They come in aluminum and then they have a boysene reed package for about $300. So we'll fix that. That was probably the cause of the engine meltdown, but I've just disconnected everything on here. I wanted to get the primary clutch off, but I haven't got my tool yet. We got snowed out and I haven't got mail in a few days, but I'm going to try the water trick. I'm going to put it on the ground, put this vertical and get that primary clutch off and that'll allow me to get um, some kind of a holding bolt bracket under there that allowed me to pull the motor out. Right now it's kind of like locked in there in this uh, interference. But I've had I found a few different things that have caused a couple issues. I did break off a little nipple here um, with the uh, on the rave, rave valves there. The Odeker clamps are real pain. I also broke a little plastic fitting here. 
on the EFI. So I'll have to get those. There was an O-ring that just fell out of the airbox, broken on the secondary clutch. Uh, this bearing needs to be replaced. Not too bad. I like going through here and checking out everything. See the uh, chain case over here? That all looked pretty good. I drained the oil. There was no drain plug. I just had to pull the cover off and let it go everywhere. No big deal. There's some corn in here. I'm sure some kind of mice sometime or another. But I basically just disconnected everything, drained a lot of coolant, sucked a lot out where I can. And now I'm ready to uh, pull the motor. I need to pull this and then the motor. Take that apart, see what's wrong with it. See if I just need to get a new top end or, or what. We'll, uh, we'll see. All right, so I'm going to wrap this bolt with some Teflon tape, some PTFE tape. Uh, Parker reached out to me, told me to wrap it in the direction it's not screwing into, so I'm going to wrap it like clockwise around this. Put a little water in there. Only the best. Put a little in there. I don't think it takes but just a little bit. I'm sure that's probably good. All right, it's a, it's a big goober on there. We'll see. Me think it's too much. Electrical cables disconnected. That's free. Oh, look at the mess in here. Like some mice just lived in there. Gross. Probably a dead mouse in there too. All right, we'll see if we can get this motor out. Curious as I am. I was able to take the electronics cover off here. See the flywheel and I'm just kind of surprised that definitely looks lean, but. Feel a little scoring over here. I don't know if it's aluminum transfer or some kind of scoring. Mm. Hard to turn over. Yeah, there's like a good chunk missing there. Nick them both. Yeah, there's a good little rough spot there. I don't know, I almost think I should. I have a hard time not tearing everything apart, so I should probably get the flywheel off, take apart the rave valves, maybe replace the bellows, at least inspect the crank bearings individually. Right, what do you think? 
Pretty fun project, actually. Let's see, let's get a better look at this one. This side actually feels nice and smooth. I don't know if I'll touch that side. I have a hard time not <laughs> replacing something since I'm in here, but this is definitely the culprit. Hey, not bad. It didn't cause any extra other damage. We'll uh, put the head back on so we can keep the flywheel from rotating and pop the flywheel off. I wonder if my regular Harbor Freight uh, flywheel puller will work. All right, so. Doesn't look like anything's like broke on here. Might be a crack there. Yeah, there's a little crack in that cylinder, so definitely send this one out. Now this piston here. Crack there. Does not look good. On this side. angle. Yeah, not good either. Hey, what about uh, let's take this jug off, take a look at that one. Yeah, this cylinder looks really good. Don't see any issues with it. We'll see about that one, but uh, this piston, oil on it, hey, that's not bad, that one doesn't look too bad, yeah, a little scuff in there, but we'll replace that, replace this, no, both pistons, and this, Uh, maybe I should have taken the flywheel off now. Can I get myself in a situation where I can put those jugs on easy enough? A little rebuild kit. I wonder how good the crank is. I'll further inspect that. I put the uh, jugs back on in the head and hooked up a Harbor Freight. Uh, Flywheel removal tool. Let's see if we can do this without too much of an issue. My friend Nick kind of showed me this trick. You can kind of. on it, kind of smack it a bit. Dare go more than 200 foot pounds. Mm.
Popped. Some magnets. It's a bit crusty. That's yeah, a good thing to do. Right, so I took the flywheel off and I just felt the crank with my hands and honestly it feels pretty good. I'm wondering if I should uh, replace the crank seals. I would assume yes, but I don't know. Is it worth it? That's uh, <laughs> like. Or do I take the crank out? Do I check the end bearings to see if they're good? I know I'm here. I, I want to just kind of te finish tearing it apart, but I don't know. Is it going to make any difference at all? Uh, let me know in the comments. It'd be, be good. All right, so we've got one cylinder that's pretty toast. There's a bunch of different cracks in it. It'd be hard to tell with this. Get some more lighting, but there's cracks in the the cylinder, I not really sure if that'd be good for a core or not, but you can get a cylinder for 375, so I'm just gonna pick up another cylinder and then a top end kit and a bunch of other little parts and uh, go from there. All right, that about does it for uh, this part. I will pick it up after Daytona, hopefully with a bunch of new parts, and we'll get this going. Basically, uh, needs good cleaning. Just a bunch of mouse crap in there, and parts, and, and that's how you do it. You just take apart everything you can think of. Yeah. Have a it. If you enjoyed this content, let me know. I just kind of like taking apart engines, and uh, I just really need to assemble one of these engines. I don't think I'm gonna just take that other one. Stick in this edge over here, or XFR. Get that ready. This is a fun project, I really like this stuff. Yeah.